I'm a software engineer and I lost all my home server data. Bad introduction, don't you think? Well, for me, it's an excellent excuse to make you go through a brand new setup and help you configure MergeFS and Snapred on your server. Ready? Let's dive in. First, let's start some history. I'm traveling a lot. And as you know, traveling with us on a hard drive is not really recommended. It is heavy and mostly unsafe. If anything happened to your hard drive, you will lose all your travel memories. Google One and Google Photos are very good service, but you cannot store full definition and it can be a bit costly with time. Because of this, a few years ago, I decided to set up my own home server, aka NAS. I used basically old components from previous PC and secondhand parts that I found on different websites like eBay. I use it mainly to store my photos, videos and other different files. In this NAS I have one M2 SSD drive for the system and the temporary files, as well as four 2TB hard drive set up in RAID 5. This was enough for my storage and this is accessible 24-7. That was the dream until this day where I couldn't access it anymore. I tried to recover my data the best I could, but between the fact that two drives were down and that LVM was used on the top of that because of a bad decision of the time I set up the server, I couldn't recover anything. It was completely impossible. What probably happened is that one day, one of the drives silently crashed. I was pretty sure I set up my email notification correctly, but I never received any email until that day where a second drive crashed, crashing the entire system and making me lose all my precious data. Anyway, it was time for me to grieve my lost data and be very grateful about the backup that I had. Then I put everything out and removed the two faulty hard drives. Instead, I put two 12 terabytes external hard drive that I had on the side from when mining Chia was still a thing. I decided to use them to make me spend no additional money on it. This gave me an heterogeneous configuration with two 2 terabytes hard drive and two 12 terabytes hard drive. In this situation, we could use RED to set up a two times RED1 configuration but we will lose half of the space of all the drives. On paper, RAID is a great system for NAS. You're losing one or two drives in capacity, but in exchange of one or two drive fault tolerance. Every time you're writing a file in a RAID 5 array, all the blocks are spread across different drives, and one parity block generated with the checks on the, the others is put on the parity drive. This way, if you lose one drive, you can use the parity data to restore the data that you lost. Now, if you're like me and you lose two drives at the same time, well, you lost everything. Well, I assure you that when it's happening to you, you wish that you could recover at least the data that are still in the two working drives. Well, with RAID, you can't. RAID has some annoying limitations when you are on a budget. Replacing disk is not easy. You need to put your array in a degraded state, remove the previous disk, put the new one, and rebuild the entire data with parity. This process is so intensive that sometimes you can lose all the drives by doing it. All the disk must be of the same size, otherwise you're gonna basically just lose space. So an upgrade in storage capacity can be pretty sad. And if I was telling you that with two different software, you can have the same level of safety with more advantages, MergerFS and SnapRaid are not related to each other, but complementary. MergerFS is a simple tool that make you group your disk and make their appear as one. When you write a file on this group, by default, the file is written to the drive that have the more available capacity. But you can configure different policies. I invite you to check the link of all the available policies on MergeFS GitHub project to find the one which suits you the best. Unlike RED, the split is not made on the block level, but on the file level. That means that if you lose one disk, 
because it is temporary offline or because you have a failure, you don't lose all your data. You can still access normally the files that are on the other disks. And when your faulty drive come back online, you get back everything. With a bit of scripting, there is also a way to use SSD drive as cache. I won't cover this for now. The downside of it is you can have slower read and write times because instead of spreading all the load across your drives, you're still writing and reading from one specific drive at a time. SnapRaid allows you to store your parity data on one or two drives so you can have one or two disks failure tolerance, exactly like RAID 5 or RAID 6. It is stored in files, so if you want to change your hard drive, you just have to copy those files to the new one and everything will continue working. You can choose to exclude some folders or files if you don't want parity data to be processed for them, saving computing power and space on your parity drive. The downside of SnapRaid is that your parity data is not generated in real time. You need to run a command to analyze and generate the parity data for the files that you just added or modified. Until you don't do it, your data is not safe. By combining these two software, you will have a similar solution to RAID that allows you to get back your data after one lost drive and even get back some of your data after more than one lost drive. Yes, the parity data generation is not made in real time. That means that you can lose the file between the moment you add them and the moment you make a sync. The real question here is, do you store files all day long on your server? Personally, I'm adding files from time to time and I don't really benefit of having something which is watching all my files all time long exactly at the second. If I'm adding a lot of files, I will make a synchronization, but I will also explain you how to set up an automatic synchronization. Okay, let's set it up. I have four drives in total, two terabytes and two 12 terabytes. I choose to use one of the 12 terabytes for parity data. This way, I'm ensuring that I will have enough space for all parity that I want to store. So I'm going to have data one, data two, and data three has data drive and Parity 1 for Parity Drive. First, on all storage drives, I will create a new empty partition with FDisk and format it with MKFS. I choose XFS file system. Then, using BLKID, you can print all the IDs of your drives. It's a more reliable way to reference your drive in your FS tab. When a drive disconnects, the letters of your drive can be changed. Using the IDs, you're making sure that your drive will stay at the right place. We will use those IDs to complete our LTC FS tab file. The goal is to mount automatically the drive at the startup. I saved the FS tab file and created the folders that I want to be used as mount points. Then I'm going to use mount A to mount them all at once. Okay, we have a drive formatted and mounted. Now let's go on Major FS. Personally, I'm a lazy person and I choose to install MergeFS with my Ubuntu repository with apt install fuse MergeFS. If you want a more up-to-date version of MergeFS, I strongly recommend you to check out the GitHub repository of MergeFS. You will find the link in the description below. Okay, we go back to a etc fs tab file again, and we're creating a new mount point. Here, I decided to mount all the drives under slash mnt slash data something and mount them under slash mnt slash pool. Then we save the fs tab file again and we create the slash mnt slash pool directory and we mount everything again with mount dash a. Using the df command, you will realize that a new drive appears with the accumulated capacity of all the drives in the pool. That's cool, no? As I want all the data that I create on my pool to be spread maximum across all the drives according to the percentage of free space that they have, I choose the PFRD policy. Feel free to have a look on the policies on the GitHub repository of MergerFS to find the exact policy that works the best for you. Okay, now we have one big drive, but all the data we, have we put inside is not safe until we install SnapRaid. Same here, I decided to be lazy and install SnapRaid with Ubuntu repositories. 
Then we will edit the etc slash snapred.conf config file. If the file doesn't exist, don't worry, it's very easy to create. First, we want to specify where to store the parity data with the parity instruction. In my case, I choose to store it in slash mnt slash parity1, which is my parity drive, in a file called snapred.parity, but you can choose to put it wherever you want. Then we want to specify which data disk we want to use as input. For me, it's going to be data 1, 2, and 3. Then we want to give to snapred some content files. The content files are an index of your data. It does not take much space, so more is better. Feel free to even put one on your system SSD drive to access the data as fast as possible. It helps Snapred indexing your content and run faster. Then you can add exclusions for folders you don't want the parity data to be generated. If you have download folder, for example, maybe you don't want those files to be protected. Last but not least, I'm adding an option to save every 100 gigabyte with the autosave instruction. Then you can launch your first synchronization with the command snapred sync. If you don't have a lot of data yet, it's going to be pretty fast, but it can be longer depending on how much data you have on your drives. When this command complete, your data is now safe. <laughs> Wait a minute. My data is safe now, but what if I'm adding more files? Indeed, like I said before, with snapred, nothing is running in the background. You need to manually synchronize every time that you feel the need to. To sync this in a regular basis, I use a script initially made by Zach Reed. This script was supposed to send an email when finished, with a report in it. From experience, email is nice, but it needs configuration. You need to use a provider such as MailChimp or SendGrid, or you can use also your Gmail account with a bit of configuration, which is not going to be easy if you have two-factor authentication activated. Personally, I prefer to have my mailbox as clean as possible, so I would prefer another solution sending notification through a Slack channel. Slack is always open on my computer because the main customer I'm working for as a freelance wants to use Slack as method of communication. This way, I will never miss any notification. To receive Slack notification, nothing more simple. Go to apa.slack.com. From there, click on Create New App. Then choose From Scratch, enter a name for it, and a workspace and click create. Then to be able to send notification, go to incoming webhooks, activate the feature and click on add a new webhook to your workspace button. Then grant access for your app to one of your channel. Once this is done, you will be given an example of a webhook that you can call using curl. If you just copy paste this into your terminal, you will instantly receive a Slack notification. Perfect. Now that notifications are working, let's copy the script of Zachary and change it to send Slack notification instead of email notification. If you want this already changed, I put your link to my own file in the description below. This script has several variables that you can use to suit your needs better. Everything set? Good. Save the script, launch it to ensure that everything is running fine and you should receive your Slack notification at the end. Then you have one last decision to make. When to call this script? Indeed, if you add new files to your drives, they will be unprotected until this script runs. For my usage, I choose it to call it once every night and manually run a synchronization when I'm adding a lot of files to my server. For this, I'm using a simple cron tab. You can choose to call it several times a day if you don't have that much data to verify, or if your data is more precious than mine. It's your server, your rules. Well, now we have set up a real alternative to RAID systems. MergeFS to see all your disks as one, and SnapRed to generate parity data and help you prevent disk failure. The two of them are working seamlessly together, and as the parity data is generated at the file level and not at the block level, it makes everything more simple. If tomorrow you want to replace one of your drives for bigger, you will just have to copy its content over to the new one. No need to rebuild any parity, do anything of that kind. Keep it simple. This is a game changer.
compared to put your raid array in degraded state and have to rebuild the entire parity data. If you're like me and you're using your home server to store content from time to time and put movies that you can re-download, well, this is a more than enough solution. If at the contrary, you're using your server for more critical production application, RED is still the way to go. Well, this is it. This was my first video on my YouTube channel. I hope it has been useful to you. If you are interested to know what software I will run on my home server, or if you just like content about technology, development, travels with a digital nomad approach, don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell to get notified on my future videos. Thank you for watching, see you soon and take care.